Conostegia hita is actually very closely related to stinging nettle, but unlike stinging nettle, it fortunately doesn't sting at all. Although it has this tiny, tiny hairs that might a bit tickle you in the throat sometimes, but in general, that's a really lovely vegetable. Its uh, young leaves and stems as well are uh, juicy and uh, it has very mild taste. It's, it's generally uh, mixed with any kind of dish, whether, whether it's sandwiches or you know, a salad. It, you can add it to, for, to soups, whatever, steam it. And uh, it is uh, commonly eaten in uh, some parts of southern China and uh, northern India, but uh, generally it's one of the most underutilized vegetables in the world. Which is a shame, as it is uh, very rich in iron. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, it's uh, easy to grow. It can be grown uh, on, in hanging baskets, which uh, means that you don't really need to have a lot of space for that. It's it's perfect to, uh, if you uh, just uh, live in some condo, for example. Don't don't even have a garden. You know, this this is something that is really really nice to grow. So that's one of the reasons. Why, why I really, really want to inform more people about it because although it's, it's, uh, it's not uh, very special in its, in its taste, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really, really, really nice vegetable and it's so, so, so unknown that I want to inform you about it. That's how it is. So as you can see, Gonostegia like to grow in pretty moist areas, half shady, alongside grasses and other small green plants. Well, let's show you the stem, it's pretty thin and sometimes it can grow tubers that are also edible but I think this in this climate it's, it's not growing uh, those tubers well. I've never seen any big tubers here in the Philippines but they claim that uh, in some uh, parts of southern China the tubers are like thumb size and they eat it. So as you can see here, in less shady areas, Gnostagia hirta is, uh, is less robust. Uh, its leaves are shorter and uh, its internode spaces are shorter too. 
Well, it's still good uh, as a vegetable. Sometimes when it's like really uh, dry, the, the leaves might, might be more tough, so they are not very good to eat as a fresh vegetable, but it's still very good for uh, any kind of uh, cooking and also for uh, use uh, for infusions because Gonostegia hirta besides being a very good vegetable has also medicinal uses so as a very nutritious vegetable it's uh, given in India to lactating mothers to increase milk flow and also for children, especially when they suffer malnutrition, atrophy. Uh, it's, it's also uh, help uh, with indigestion for children and it's also given to elders to strengthen them. And uh, it, its medicinal values are in the traditional Chinese medicine, they, they, they consider it mm, a cooling and uh, cleansing herb. They said it's invigorate the spleen. They use it for uh, disease like... Uh, uh, for, uh, they use it for edema. They use it for uh, painful urination. Well, the whole list you will see on, the, on my article on my blog. I will put the link below. So after publishing an article about this plant of, on my blog, I received an email from a reader from uh, Arunachal Pradesh in India saying that in his tribe they say that a meal without Gonostegia hirta is like a meal without salt. So that's how important it is for them. It's really really nice vegetable, very nutritious. Very tasty. It's it's not it's not not something that is like really unique. You know, it's just mild taste. It's just nice. Uh, yep. Very 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 nice vegetable with uh, uh, medicinal properties. Now some in India they uh, even use it to, to treat cancer. And they use uh, the paste from fresh plant. To, they apply it uh, on skin diseases like ringworms, and also they apply it on the places of bone fractures. Apparently, it speed up and improves uh, bone healing. So these are its tiny tiny flowers. Mm. Yep. Yeah, there are some ones on it. That's how it looks like. That's how it grows. Gonostegia hirta.